The steam plant using a castle steam boiler. This is part three, making a mounting for the hand pump. I cut this piece using my bandsaw and cleaned it up on the belt sander. Now it's on the bench and I'm painting the top of it with some marking out blue. I've made quite a lot of videos showing this process before, but this one's going to be slightly different because I'm going to show the pitfalls and potential mistakes that you can make as I'm doing the job. This is actually a shot in real time of the marking out blue drying. It dries very quickly. This image shows a tender hand pump sat on top of the block, and you can see now why I need the block. The water inlet is the union at the bottom, and I don't know why this has a union. Normally a tender hand pump just has a hole in the bottom, as the entire unit is screwed into the tank and is fully submerged in water. So the next time I see my friend Chris at CME Engineering, I'll ask him why he makes them like this. What I'm doing at the moment with the hand pump sat on top of the block is using my right angled scriber to mark through the holes in the pump onto the block. So what can go wrong here? Well, if you move the position of the pump inadvertently, you'll mark the positions for the holes in the wrong place. And believe me, that is a really easy thing to do. After scribing the positions of the holes on the block, I thought it would be a good idea to use my ruler just to check that they're all aligned with each other. This marking out is a bit of a mess, but it's only to confirm to me that the holes are in the right place. And as far as I can see, I think they're OK. Now it's time to take the metal block over to the drilling machine and clamp it in the machine vise. I prefer to drill holes like this. I use a centre drill. I could use a centre punch on the bench first, but when I've done that in the past, it's not always worked out. Now with the centre drill in the right place, I start to drill the holes. The good thing about centre drills is that if you do make a bit of a mistake and start off by drilling it not in the right place, you can reposition the centre drill in the correct location. And you can't do that with a twist drill. At the moment I'm drilling through tapping size for 6BA, which is 2.3mm. It's a very small drill bit and it would be very difficult to drill the hole in the right place if I hadn't used the centre drill. I should have done this whilst the part was on the bench, but it's OK in the machine vise. I'm marking the centre of the piece of steel. And once I've joined up the two marks, that's the centre. I'm going to drill and countersink two holes. Both of these holes will be on the centre line, three-eighths of an inch in from either end. This is the way I generally do it. There are many different ways to do this. I could drill two holes and thread the holes and bring the bolts in from underneath the baseboard. And that would make it easier to remove the hand pump. You just unbolt it from underneath. But for some inexplicable reason, I prefer this method. I'm drilling a 3 16th of an inch diameter hole all the way through the block. Two of them, in fact. And then, using a countersink bit, I deeply countersunk the first hole and here I'm doing the second one. I intend to use some really strong wood screws to hold the block onto the baseboard, after which I will then fit the pump. How to mount the pump to the steel block? Two options are available. Use screw bolts and screw them in from the top, or use studs and hold the pump in place with four nuts. The choice is entirely up to you. Both of the options are fine. I just think that maybe nuts on studs look better. Whether you use bolts or studs, you have to thread the holes. And this can be difficult for a beginner. This is only a 6BA tap. The hole is 2.3mm in diameter, and if you apply too much pressure to this small tap, and don't turn it in reverse to clear the chips, it will probably snap off in the work, and this is not what you want to happen. Be gentle with it, use some lubrication, when tapping, it's really important to make sure that the tap enters the hole squarely. And in this clip, I haven't done that. This particular hole felt much more difficult to tap than the others. As the deeper the tap got into the hole, the more off-centre it was. And I'd love to say, well, I did it like this for the video, but I didn't. I made a mistake. I didn't shear off the tap, which is a good thing. But this stud's going to lean slightly. I'm using a drop of steam engine lubricating oil, which as you can see is on the bench, and I'm backing off the tap frequently, one and a half turns in to half a turn backwards. This clears the chips and stops the tap from jamming. Also, in between threading the holes, I wipe the end of the tap with a cloth. 
Finally, the four holes are threaded and no taps were hurt during the making of this video. Now I need to find some 6BA nuts and bolts, so it's over to my box of 6BA nuts and bolts. I'm using brass bolts and I'm screwing one of them into the block, followed by another one, and another, and finally the fourth one. When I drilled the tapping size holes in the block, I forgot to mention that I did use the depth stop on the drilling machine. That means all of the holes are more or less the same depth, so all I had to do was tightly screw the bolts into the block. Once I'd screwed all of the bolts in place, I chopped the heads off using a pair of side cutters. Then I cleaned up the tops of the studs using my one inch belt sander. Yes, I know I should have put the nuts on first, but I've never found it to be a problem. When I clean off the tops of bolt heads using my belt sander, the nuts screw on straight away. But really, I do agree, it's a good idea to put nuts on the bolts before you chop the heads off. This clip shows all of the nuts in place on the studs. When I thought about the position of this hand pump relative to the steam plant, I changed my mind and decided to use screw bolts because getting into the nuts right next to the baseboard will be a problem. Here's the pump sat on the studs, and if you look at the stud at the left hand side, as you can see, it's not straight for reasons that I mentioned earlier, but the pump fits on it anyway. In the next video, I'll show how I modify the pump to feed it with water. But that is it for this video, I'd just like to say, stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.